hey, you're back, and so am I. I got some new picks, I've got some cool videos, and some epic fails that we're about to watch. Thanks for coming back. Make sure you subscribe, like this video, and let's get on it. And for those who care to know, this is an official Cavender's hat. Got it in Austin, Texas. So close to my house here in British Columbia, we had a crazy incident where somebody having some kind of medical issue or maybe was just on way too many drugs was crashing their RV all around the Coquihalla, which is a big mountain pass close to here. And uh, check out this video. RCMP say nobody was hurt and they're investigating the cause of the driver's erratic behavior. Look at, oh my God. Cone stuck underneath. Don't go beside them, dude. Don't go beside them. No! Don't! No! no! Oh my god! Bro! What? Is he hitting him? Yup. Yup. Did he hit him? Yup. Yeah, he's honking, yeah. Dog in the back of the car. Oh, 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 oh my god. Don't, don't pass, don't pass, don't pass, don't pass. I'm scared. No, they're, they're getting back on the road. No, 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 no. Go. Oh my god. Oh my god, indeed. Glad that nobody got hurt. And I looked up this accident afterwards. I really couldn't find any articles talking about why this person crashed, but they were definitely out of their mind. I'm glad they finally came to a stop without killing anybody. And this other one happened close to home too. And it's over here in Surrey, British Columbia, not too far from my house. This motor home up on a big, long residential hill broke loose and went on a runaway rampage down the road with nobody in it and eventually crashed into this poor gentleman's house. Uh, unfortunately, everyone was a loser here in the sense that these folks with the RV just had minimum liability insurance and not full coverage. And uh, so who knows who's gonna pay for all this carnage. Multiple vehicles were involved. The house was effectively destroyed or at least heavily ruined. Boy, that's a rough one here. But uh, watching that footage of the uh, RV going down the hill just blew my mind. I'm just glad that no one got hurt in that incident. You can always replace things, but you can't replace lives. You might remember this last video I did. I'll put a link to it right here, where I had an amphibious RV in it. So here's another amphibious RV of a whole nother flavor called the Boater Home. They built, I think, around 20 of these. It's back in the 80s. Obviously, there's a custom built. They're built on top of a Ford Econoline chassis that's clearly been expanded out. I saw this a few years back, and I've seen a couple of different ones featured on YouTube over the years. And uh, I just wanted to share it with everybody. This, this is, to me, one of the coolest amphibious setups uh, I've seen. In fact, it's a boat and a van. It's an RV, basically. It's a floating RV with a few extra bells and whistles that I put into it. Only 21 of these unique vehicles exist, having been built in the 80s and based on a Ford Econoline van. You can have a traditional boat, you can have it on the van as a traditional RV, so when you're driving around, this thing's just an RV, but then when you hit the water, it turns into a boat. I like it. And that's why I'm giving this man the tip of the hat Gold Star Ford Award from RVing with Joe for being the craziest Ford in this video. Absolutely love it and I wouldn't want to build it on any other chassis than a Ford. That is cool. But otherwise, if you do see a Class A RV hanging out in a boat ramp, you really gotta wonder, is it wise to take this multi-hundred thousand dollar vehicle and park it on the boat ramp and hope that the parking brake holds or that it stays in park, and that nothing wrong happens? Because if anything wrong happens, it's going in the sink there. It's gonna go deep into the water. And so you got this guy here who's taking his big rig He's got his uh, wife and family out there on the on the boat. Uh, it seems like they've got it all worked out. Uh, you can tell the person filming this is just waiting for it to go bad. And in fact, these folks do pull it off. They are able to get that boat off and take it up the ramp. But this other guy may be not so lucky. This gentleman put his van in park and got out to go undock his boat. And while he was up on the trailer getting it unhooked, his dog in the front seat somehow bumped it into reverse. And this RV started rolling backwards right into the water. Now, amazingly, this guy and some other folks really jumped into action. He got in that door, 
He stopped that RV from going any further. And with the help of some other folks, the boat ramp quickly strapped it up and was able to pull it out of the water. So halfway out of the water, this thing was pulling out on its own power. Now I'm sure there's a whole lot of water damage that was gonna have to be addressed on this RV after this. But I was really happy to see that at least he didn't lose it completely. He was able to get it out of the water and we were all able to see it. I wanna thank Bill and Julie for sending me these picks. This is similar to that fifth wheel that I showed in some of my previous videos, the one that gets towed backwards with a bumper pull. But in this case, it looks like they're a little more logical with this one where they set up a traditional fifth wheel trailer, but it actually has a bumper pull. So I imagine the truck that's pulling this, probably the one sitting right next to it, uh, is actually gonna, this is gonna overhang the back of the truck the way a fifth wheel would, but it's actually getting pulled by the traditional bumper hitch. I also would note, and, and Bill and Julie noted, that the uh, back has a little gated area with a little uh, gray picket fence in the back. I'm a sucker for any RV that incorporates a picket fence into the whole thing. And I want to thank James E. for sharing with me the product he's working on. This is actually a converted schoolie or a school bus. In one of my upcoming videos, I'm actually going to cover schoolies. So if anybody knows of any really cool school buses, send them my way to RVingWithJoe at gmail.com because I'd love to cover more schoolies. But in this case, we've got this guy who cut up a school bus and went ahead and welded on a fifth wheel hitch onto the back, built some sort of room on the back. I think he's still a work in progress on this, uh, but I can see he's got it all taped up there and waterproofed as best he can. And then he's towing a fifth wheel on the back, towing the fifth wheel on the back of this schoolie. So I, I'm sure it's going to be okay, but it'll be interesting to hear from him how this thing actually tows when he gets out there all fully loaded and running. Uh, best of luck to you. Check those welds, James, and be safe. You might remember, I think it was in my first of these series I did, there was this Prius done by JB Diesel up on uh, YouTube, and he put together a Prius with a gooseneck on the roof. And he was able to tow this trailer around, and I'm sure it can only handle so much weight and everything. But the really cool thing, of course, is how nimble it was. Now you can turn around and even drive backwards and, and just spin around underneath this gooseneck. But if you look at this classic Chevy Caprice that's nestled under this custom fifth wheel that's designed so that it too can rotate around 360 degrees with it mounted on the roof, making backing up, turning around and maneuvering much easier. Can you imagine how much weight and tension is put on those roof pillars? They just don't make cars like they used to. Awesome. Now in this video, I'm not gonna have a whole section on turducken. Uh, for those who don't know what turducken is, well, check one of my last videos. I'll link to them right here. But here is a very special tow setup that I just couldn't pass up. I lose count every time I start counting all these trucks going by. So put in the comments, how many trucks do you see all connected? I think it was in my last video that I showed these various log truck themed trailers. It's sort of this motif that people are designing their trailers with. Little did I know that I jumped into this rabbit hole of log style and wagon style trailers from just cute vintage trailers that are set up with paneling or at least faux paneling with a wrap to these Western style ones like this one, which is all done up like a saloon with a tying post on the outside. And they even carry themselves a couple of wagon wheels. So once they set up their trailer, they can lay out a couple of wagon wheels over the tires as tire covers. If anyone knows the source of this old photo, I've seen it a couple of times on the internet, but I have no idea where it comes from. This was clearly somebody's passion project gone awry. And once again, you see someone with a traditional trailer there with regular wheels, but once they park the trailer, they put up those wagon wheels for effect. Now you might remember the Kira van, which I featured in one of my earlier videos. This van is built for the apocalypse. And this got me looking at more of these apocalyptic style overlanders. I mean, really, these are just beefy overlanders. Sometimes I think they're built on military chassis or former military vehicles, but these things are ready to take on the world. As long as they can scrounge up some gas or diesel, these things can drive anywhere. And I hear from some diesel owners that older diesel engines can pretty much run on anything flammable. This one's kitted out real nice. There's a bunch of nice pictures of it here. This is clearly purpose built. It looks like it's a European style or Australian. And I say that only because of all the European style windows. It's not entirely uncommon to see those here in North America, but they're pretty much the standard it seems in other parts of the world. Inside's real nice and cozy. If you look up front there, you can see the front chassis has got a whole lot of seating. It's almost a whole room into itself when this thing is parked. But let's face it, this thing's really for a couple. I don't think you'd want to have more than two people living in this trailer. And when it comes to cool post-apocalyptic looking rigs, we've got Alan N who sent me these from the UK. 
What you're looking at here is a Series 3-109 1984 Land Rover. It's the British style. It also has this 1970s Portafold trailer. You can look up Portafold on Google and see it's a seems to be a fairly common trailer out there from the 70s in uh, in, in England. Alan, I really appreciate you sending me in these pics. And if you don't mind commenting below, what are all the radios for? I meant to ask you that in the email, but what's all that radio stuff for? Are you, is it ham radio operations or uh, is it just there for historic effect? Tell us more in the comments. And here's one last Overland rig. And as I look at a lot of these Overland apocalyptic style rigs, they really start to mimic and look like what they call Super C's or Super Class C RVs. Now, Super C's are certainly used by families and folks looking to travel. It's a great full-timer rig. It's basically built on the chassis of a big rig, right? Now, these have full commercial style parts and pieces to them. So these things are really ready to go and do a diesel push for, you know, a couple hundred thousand miles. These, these diesels will go forever if you maintain them well enough. And because they're built on big rigs, they can really be kitted out with, you know, weight not really being a consideration. Lots of slide outs, heavy duty construction, and you still have the ability to tow a big trailer with a setup like this. I want to thank Dave S for sending me these pics. These are his Super C that he has. And once again, he uses it for a trailer. Like I said, you'll find that racing trailers are a big use case for these styles. So in addition to families full time in it, you'll find the racing trailers or professionals towing a trailer around the country will use a setup like this because uh, they can live in it and they can tow a pretty hefty load. In this case, it looks like Dave's got himself a dragster and he's got himself a pit car and that little truck that, that to jot around. I'm guessing that all fits in the trailer. You know, Dave, if you want to tell us any more about this particular rig in the comments, please let us know below. I'm a little jealous of all your toys there for the record. And these super class C style trucks are generally going to be custom built. I'm sure you can go buy one used and I'm sure there's some place that's selling some of these off the rack. But if you're going to get something like this, you're going to want it built to your spec for your needs. If you're a racing person, if you're a professional working from the road, um, you're going to want it built to your needs and your specific wants. And the insides are gorgeous. You can take these style RVs, especially when weight's not a concern, and build them out to pretty much be residential level uh, quality on the inside. And let's face it, rolling into an RV park with this thing, definitely a point of pride for these owners. You do gotta keep length in mind though. These things start getting big. When you've got one of these big super C's with their big long overhangs, and then you're towing and carrying things in addition, they become massive. And I think that's most evident in this crazy clip I found where this Super C is trying to make a corner. It's going as wide as you possibly can. And he's carrying on the back some massive jet boat that's tilted to the side on the trailer because it's so big, it can't even go on a traditional trailer. Take a look at this thing. This is how millionaires play with their toys. Whether it's a super class C with a big long trailer or you're just towing your big old fifth wheel trailer, length matters and it does become a problem. As evident in this video, you can have really cool big RVs, but how are you gonna get these around the open roads? One really common thing I see, and I could do a whole video showing dozens of these, seen them in lots of recovery videos and that's when larger trailers usually fifth wheels are trying to make these type of turns and they inevitably have those wheels slide off the edge it's so easy to do and you have to go so wide so early in the game that often people don't kind of back up and recorrect once they see they're cutting in and they just try to squeak by and eventually those tires slide in so uh, you really got to be careful of your longer rigs. And of, of course, I've done exactly what happened here to Liz Amazing. If you've ever seen her YouTube channel, I'll put a link to it in the description. She's a YouTuber worth watching. Uh, she's, she's been a, she's a tough lady, been through the ringer. And uh, at this point, her and her at the time boyfriend, they're no longer together, unrelated to this crash, had this awful crash. Uh, I've done a very similar thing where you're pulling out of a gas pump and those darn metal poles at the end, they're sitting there and you're parked pretty close to the gas pump so you can gas up. And as you pull away, your tail swings around. And in this case, they really gave it a whack. I mean, they tore the back end off this trailer. In my case, all I did was put a nice yellow skid mark on the side of my trailer and the stabilizer jack got bent out a little bit. It wasn't too bad for me, but for these folks, it was really bad. I felt really bad for Liz and her boyfriend when I saw this video. So be careful out there with your long rigs. As a reminder, you can always send me cool clips, links, or pics of what you're working on or cool things you see on out there. I'd love to check them out. My email address is rvingwithjoe at gmail.com. You can pretty much send me a pic of anything. Whether or not I put it in a video, that's another story. If I do, though, I'll give you a shout out. 
You know, these aren't the only kind of videos I make. I actually do a lot of travel videos, so feel free to check out my channel and see the other types of video I've done. Like the long trip I did down in the Southwest, going to all the coolest locations, lots of drone footage, down to Hurricane where Matt's off-road recovery is. Uh, I've been all over the Southwest with this trailer and, uh, you know, got a lot of videos to prove it. So feel free to go check those out as well. Thanks everyone. And hey, you might want to think about clicking on one of these videos right here, down here, or down here. Any of these three videos are worth watching. Thanks again for coming along to my channel. And make sure to check out my channel for some of the other kinds of videos I do, like travel videos or RV advice videos. I hope to hear from you. And remember, get busy living. <sighs> yeah.